God bless you. Well, as we look upon what is happening, we see much wickedness in the world ahead of us. The world is being run, or should I say overrun, by wickedness. They are deceiving and teaching deception. Teaching lies as truth. They, without honesty in them, for they have thrown truth to the ground. They have chosen unto darkness, and to live as darkness, and to teach others that they be as the darkness they wish to see. They have put themselves above God. They have seen themselves as wise in their own eyes. They have given themselves up to foolishness, to unwise ways. They are drunk on power, drunk on deception. Their greed knows no bounds. They want all you have. They even want what you think. They want you to think the way they desire you to think. To behave as they want you to behave. To live as they want you to live or not live. They want you to be good sheeple. When they say how far to be apart, they expect you to do it. When they tell you cover up, they expect you to do it. When they tell you to roll up your sleeve, they expect you to do it. You see, certain companies, pharmakia, sorcery, they're gaining more and more traction in the mainstream media. Now, I don't follow mainstream, but it seems their adverts, their advertisements are getting bigger and getting bolder. There's an advert with a woman that cooks with a katana sharpening it and then cutting the head off a pineapple with a katana. Katana is a Japanese sword if you're not sure. So she cuts the head off the pineapple, rolls up the sleeve, points to a plaster. Have you got yours? What happens to those that do not? Are they as the pineapple? Have a think about that. Does it sound familiar? What does your Bible tell you about those that don't worship the beast? How it's made illegal to buy or sell lest they have its mark? Well, what happens? Those whose testimony, those who are beheaded, and do not take the mark of the beast. They're getting more bold. They're getting more brazen. Now recently they did a plan B stage 2 testing thing. We're going to call it that. So as not to be overly specific. They did a plan 1 testing thing couple of months before they did something where everything all the doors had to close you get the idea so that was the elderly this time the little ones they speak of well they expect everyone to do as they are told they want you to think their way, and if you don't think their way, well, they're going to remove the ability to think differently. Because where those gatherings are, they're going to get rid of them. You understand what they're doing. They're talking about speech. 
And how, well, for their own good it must be under the thumb and nail of those that can control it. You get the idea. You see, deciding what can be out there and what cannot be out there. Deciding what you can hear and what you can find, what you can research and what you cannot. You see, you're probably wondering who they are that do this. Well, they all come together, all very, very rich and powerful. Because in their world, it's money that talks. But God laughs at all their devices, because it's devices they use to do all this. But who are they? Well, it's in your Bible. Let's have a look. Revelation 18. And... Verse 23. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. And just like that series about spaceships, Star and Trek, yeah? And the ship, when it wants to travel really fast, it goes into warp. And the speed of it, you understand. And there's a man who likes to call himself the father of those two words together. A project, if you will, you understand. Merchants. Powerful merchants. Whole world deceived by powerful merchants. And they considered the great men of the earth. Well, how could they be great? Well, who's deciding the future? Exactly that, the great men. Who are the great men? Merchants. What merchants do you know that are deciding the future? Well, they're there. You know who they are. I won't be saying the names, but there's a little one that wears glasses. You understand. And they talk about, well... So that there can't be any more complacency, they say, well, we'll make sure the food definitely has it. So that whatever they eat has it, so they can get it in them, one way or another. But time shall be shortened, lest no flesh shall be saved. A final wicked kingdom before God comes. A kingdom of iron and clay that does not mix. Neither will it mix in the seed of men. In. Not on. In. Don't mix. And that's why so many twirly twirly videos. Won't be able to say more than that. But if you know what I'm speaking of. They start this way and then. No more. And all the things that people are going through. Like clotted cream. You only want the first four letters of the first word, people full of that, you understand. Now, we know what's going on. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. My body, my choice. That's what they say. Little ones are in danger while they are growing and developing because of that slogan you just heard me say. This is the world we live in. There is much now, you see. Everything is business. Everything is ka-ching-ching. -ching. How much ka-ching-ching -ching can anyone make? Well... 
of all these things they do, it's ka ching ching that they are focused on. They have gotten drunk on their own opulence. They are drunk on their own designs, their own desire for their own wealth. They have rejected God and put themselves as God. It's blasphemy. They reject Christ. They consider it a news that be considered fake. Because they themselves have given themselves up to debasement, a debased mind. They are lost. They do not consider what they do. And they show the world how corrupt, how deceitful, how dishonest, how greedy, how selfish, how cruel they consider to be. They mock and they scoff. But it is God that judges. We pray for them that they turn from their ways, that there be repentance, fruits worthy of repentance, because they can expose much with what they know you understand. Now, with all these things they do, they have lusted after the things of the world. They have lusted after all the fancies, all the delicacies, all the expensive things. And they're greedy with all their creations and it's never enough. It gets more and more complacent. There's no repentance in them. They do not consider what they have done. But you know what? It won't go well. For God will come with judgment. Because these are the people that have come to destroy the world of Revelation 11.18. They deceive. They say they want to do one thing, but they do another. It's to make excuses. To bring more ways of getting more greed to themselves. The taxation, the vexation. Well, we haven't enough air anymore. We need to remove all the carbon. But all the plants breathe in carbon so that they can breathe out oxygen. If I haven't got any plants... I won't have very much oxygen. So then people will be fighting over oxygen. Oh, this person's not doing as I told. Better get rid of that one. Be like Logan's Run, if you've ever seen it. A world that is mixed between Logan's Run and Soylent Green. They're already talking about that sort of thing as normality. And there are those... They have had one too many of something. You know what? They don't care. They'll happily eat whatever's put in front of them. As long as it's food. Their minds are not as they once were. I have had people say to me they'd be happy to be a conveyor belt robot. So they no longer needed to think. People that just want to be told what to do. So that they don't have to think anymore. Giving up their own free will. Giving up their ideal to think. The ability to do so. Because they'd rather something did it for them. It's not living. It's not even existing. Something else. There's nothing in a person such as that to rejoice upon. For they have emptied themselves of all light. There's no light there to shine anymore. So it is dimmed. We, in a dark world, must be the light. We must shine boldly and brightly for Christ. We are to obey God and not men. Some of us may have to go through greater persecution than others. 
Some of us may be a Stephen. But you know what? He went to sleep. He prayed for them as they stoned him. Some of us, our necks, might not need to be attached much longer. Many things to consider. Have we thought about it? Have we considered it? Have we fought to be prepared for it? Are we resigned to loss? Are we ready for hardship? Are we ready for persecution? Whatever comes, comes. All for the glory of God. Have we been preparing? There's a famine. It's going to increase. You know there's four horses, right? Each one is a stage. Each one has a part. You had the first horse already. It went conquering. The whole world was conquered in a moment. Simple piece of fabric. And the Latin word for crown. We won't risk saying it today. Things are more stringent lately. So we must be careful. But there is a beer that has the same name and a certain something that has the same name, you understand. And you know there's a red horse that takes peace from the earth. There's violence everywhere. And there are nations gearing up against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. This cross-references with Matthew 24. Daniel 2.43, iron mixed with clay, but it doesn't mix. All these things are all interconnected. The same as a number you cannot buy or sell as you have that is 666. A certain word is 666. A certain ship they told you there will be for it is also 666. And then a certain government code they brought out. That was also, in regard to it, was also 6666. And then a certain something they let you know that was in it, that was the name of Lucifer. And then the other word was race. As one word. The race of him. Well, O oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, how you were fallen. As is written in Isaiah fourteen twelve. Well... How much of that did they stick in it? 6.66 ml. I seem to be finding a lot of 666s here. How bizarre. Who can imagine? Can't imagine why. Oh, how many feet did people have to stand at distance? Was it six feet apart? I believe so. Well, now we're treading awfully close to the edge. We better speak carefully. What was the rule? I think they called it the rule of, and then that number was also six. Can't imagine why. What was that other one? You know, groups of no more than. What was that number? Yeah, it was six. Or well, what about the curfews? And what time was it? Exactly. Well, now they want your cities to be 15 minutes. They're changing many things. The serpent on the pole. People believe it is a place of healing, but I do not. Many are still going there trusting in them. But they have new codes, new regulations, new laws, such as the NG191. You'll have to look that up for yourself. I won't be able to speak it here. But once you know it, you won't be able to unknow it. Rules and regulations. This is business. Finances is all they look to now. Wealth and hunger is all they want. And any way to make it, they will make it. Regardless of what they have to do to make it. Well, the world is changing, is it not? But all things must come. 
Your food is running out, and the animals, their meat is being tainted, for they are being given other things. You're being convinced to eat all sorts of creepy, crawly things, and the chitons within them. Now you can look up how that does not digest and what it does to you. On top of this, they will need to be happy with bugs and creepy crawly things for your dinner. That's why for so many years everyone was watching those worthless TV shows about people on islands that happened to be somewhat famous for some reason. And they would have to eat creepy crawly things and other detestable disgusting things you shouldn't even consider some of those things would be raw and it was all for what the world calls entertainment I call it debasement there's no morality no one cares what they watch they just don't want to spend time with God so they'll watch anything on a big screen turn off the screen all it does is get in the way of your time with your father in heaven. So turn it off. Only God matters. Don't let these things worry you. If you feel weary, you go to Christ. It's him that will nourish you. It's him that will give you living waters when you're weary. He'll give you rest for your bones. He'll help you through all of this. So don't let all of this out there scare you. Because you know what? Followers of Christ ain't got to worry. We're pilgrims. This is our current walk. Our current stay. It's a pit stop. It's the pit stop to the kingdom. What kingdom? God's kingdom. A kingdom that what? Lasts forever. So, this, this don't last forever. Wages of sin is death, so the flesh dies. But, it's the spirit that lives on. And in the blink of an eye all shall be changed. And those that sleep. And those that remain. Will all be caught up in the air. And the blink of an eye shall be changed. And they shall see him as he is. And we will be with the Lord forever. So. Don't let this world and its mortal coil tempt you. Because the world's going to tell you, betray and deceive, and you'll have a little reward in it. Sin and be rewarded is what they bring. But what? Does it profit someone to gain the world but lose their soul? Remember, hell and torment are eternal. As is God's kingdom. You'll have to choose which one you want. Your blood be on your own head. Just as the watchman of Ezekiel 33 does warn. God wants all to repent and come to the knowledge of the truth. But it's up to us to do so. We have a choice. I can only share scripture. I can only show you the verses. It's up to you what you do with them. God is there for each and every one of you. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And his judgment and his wrath is coming against all the wicked. Yes, we may go through tribulation, but God's wrath, that is for those that have gone wicked. Be as it was in the days of Noah. Noah was in the storm. He was in the flood, but he was delivered from the flood as the world was flooded. He was in the ark with all the animals and the storm of all the destruction of all life. For him and the animals, while it swayed to and fro in that storm, they were in there, but they were delivered. We go through storms. But we endure, we persevere and we overcome in Christ. We're not going to be overcome by the evils of this world. But overcome evil with good. Jesus is there every step of the way for all of us. Stay bold in Christ. Remember, 
He slept through the storm because he knew he had nothing to worry about. It's us that get scared to call on Christ. And it's Christ that rebukes the storm and calms it. Remember that. He's there for each and every one of us. And the enemy's time is short. He's going to do as much wickedness as he can while he can. And we're going to do as much good as we can while we can. Because we can. So that we can stand as light. Bold. Preaching the gospel, the good news. Across all the corners of the world. Preaching as far as each and every one of us can. I do my part for the laborers are few. But the harvest is ripe. So we tirelessly go out as laborers. Doing what we can. For we were made for good works. That we ought to walk in them. So let's walk in them boldly. Praising God as we go through the storm. Because with those four horses. Peace taken from the earth. And then what happens next? Day's wage for a little bit of bread. Everything's going up in price. But I think you're already aware of it. I'm not surprised by it. I knew it was coming. Been saying it long enough here. What is shown comes to pass, and as is written, so shall it be done. God's will, not ours. So we need to stand bold and faithful in Christ. Just like Joseph was warned with Pharaoh's dream, seven years of plenty to the seven year famine. What did they do? They prepared. They used the seven years of plenty to be prepared for the seven years famine. Be prepared. Learn how to be sustainable. What other people call common weeds. You'd be surprised how nutritious they are. If you know how to live off the land. Recognize what you can. Study what you can. Be prepared. There's much to learn. Because there may be a time when all technology doesn't turn on. And if that be, then you're going to need to know how to not use a can opener and a microwave. You're going to have to know how to start a fire. You're going to have to know how to cook on a fire. You're going to have to know how to prepare what you can catch. But don't be afraid. God will guide. He always provides. All this wickedness and those that are drunk on their wickedness. They will be left destitute. Just like Revelation 18. All these abominable things. And just as in Revelation 17 at the last verses. For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will. And to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast. Until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Remember that. They're all going to give their power to the beast. They will all serve the beast. So don't be surprised. When the beast rises up, it's not far. They are drunk on power. And their power is growing and it's becoming more bold each year, have you noticed? Just like birth pangs increases in frequency and intensity. It's getting closer. It's exciting, isn't it? We are a remote generation for a time such as this. God has blessed each and every one of you to be here for this time, so don't shake and quake. Praise be the Lord. His faithful love endure forever. May we stand boldly. 
May we stand steadfastly in our foundations on the cornerstone that is Jesus Christ so that we can go out there and preach the good news and give hope to those that feel there is none. Because I've noticed there seems to be a massive increase recently in people. And I'm like, well, hang on, that seems ever so familiar. And I'm expecting more to come. This will be an interesting year. So are you prepared? I hope you're bold in Christ this day. I hope you have your spiritual armor of Ephesians 6, 10 to 20. So that you know you've done all to stand against the evil day. I hope you're trusting in God for he is your refuge, Psalm 91. You know he takes care of you, right? So you don't have to be afraid when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Psalm 23, he's the good shepherd. Not sure how to pray, we'll spend time praying. The Lord's Prayer. You have to start somewhere. Learn. Matthew 6, 9 to 15. You're not sure your prayers are heard? Well, go to the withered fig tree. Matthew 21, verses 21, 22. And again in Mark 11, 20 to 26. You see, the thing is, with the withered fig tree, believing in God, having faith, not doubting when you pray, knowing that God hears your prayers, believing that you will receive that which you asked for, preparing to receive giving thanks. The basics. The same as you are taught to forgive your enemies and yes your enemies are doing very very bad things we're not arguing that but you know where they're going and our prayers for them that they have a chance at salvation because if they don't come to it all we've done is pour hot coals on their head for the day of judgment which means it'll be even worse for them remember we were once lost but now found Praise be the Lord. He's calling us to finally wake up. This is the final call. Wake up. It's time to awake from sleep and slumber. It's time to be sober. It's time to be prepared. So much is coming. Raise your little ones in the words of the way. So that when they are older, they will not depart from it. Don't let this world be their teacher. Let God be the one you instruct them in. So that they not depart from it. There is so much to learn, but so little time to speak it. So I tell you, know your Bibles. Study intently, and if you don't know where to begin, you pray and you ask, God, where do I begin? What do I need? Be humble. Don't be angered like the that poor, rich, young ruler who left sad and dejected. Oh, Father, what is it I lack? Show me that I can be corrected. Oh, correct me that I can learn and grow. Oh, rebuke me and shake out the chaff. I can be refined as wheat, that I desire to be as the wheat gathered into the barn. For I desire not to be that which is picked up and bundled into the fire. Let me not be a tear. You understand? God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. So humble yourselves. Work out your salvation in fear and trembling. Fear God and keep the commandments. For that is man's all and the greatest commandments are. Love God with all your heart, your mind, your body, your strength and soul and spirit. And the second like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love all. Do unto all as you would do unto yourself. 
Treat others as you wish to be treated. Love. Focus on it. Be built and molded in it. Let God give you a compassionate heart. And take out the stony. And put his spirit in you. For he will wash us in baptism. Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And in case you forgot, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one come to the Father but through the Son. Stay studying. Stay encouraged. Stay bold in Christ. God bless each and every one of you in his love, in his peace, in his joy. That you be his joy and not his lamentation. May God guide and refine each and every one of you. God bless you.